Back brace. Yes. Checking out new set. New studio. New studio. A lot of work went on went into this uh, by Derek Service and uh, Jeff Shaw. Yeah. To get everything ready in time for the new year. Got new lighting, new backgrounds, all kinds of stuff that we're gonna play with. Yes. So how was your vacation, Bryce? It was good. It was pretty busy though. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You play a lot of games. I've played a bit. Yeah. Anything new? Uh, yeah, I got Bioshock. Yeah? So, uh, what was Bioshock like? Oh, it was very fun. Yeah? Uh, I played Bioshock on the PS3. Did you play, you played on the PC? Yeah. Have you played any of the other ones? No, well, there's one other one, right? Yeah. Maybe you've got some imagery to go with this. Yeah. But yeah, Bioshock is pretty cool, so why don't you tell us about Bioshock? Well, it's a first-person shooter developed by Irrational Games, am I correct? Yeah, I think Irrational Games and published by 2K yeah. or something or other. <laughs> yeah. So the, the game uh, takes place uh, underwater, right? Yes. Except that you're in a city underwater, as you can see here. Yeah. And uh, the whole idea is that you... Uh, it starts out like you, there's not really a whole lot of explanation. You're in a plane crash. Or something yeah. Like it. Plane crash, and then you find a lighthouse yeah. and a submarine that goes down. And you yeah. discover this underwater city that's been down there, abandoned, and it was built supposedly in the 50s, right? Yeah. So, so I think you're not much after the 50s in the game. Oh, is it like the 60s or something? Yeah. So it hasn't been too long, uh, but already there's been trouble down there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what did you think of the game? I thought it was very fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the graphics were pretty good, right? Yeah. And well, you played on a PC, so you got like the full. Well, I play it on my laptop, so. Hey, I finished all the these. Okay. Um. um all right. So tomorrow. Uh, I have court tomorrow. Okay. All right. So, uh, next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So next week, then we'll shift the whole operation to downstairs and take care of the rest of the court. Okay. All right. Um, thank you once again. You're welcome. <laughs> you have any thoughts on video gaming you'd like to share with the audience? Um, actually, I don't... I don't know if they can I, hear you, but... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played any video games recently. Um, it's been a while. Yeah. I right. think the last thing I've played was, like, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. Oh, sweet thing. We'll be talking about that when the new one comes out this year. Uh, yeah, there's another yeah, there's, uh, five with the, the you know the high HD version of that. Like they've redone everything, but they said it's bigger than all like almost all the other games combined. Oh, combined, just, <laughs> well, like the size of the world. Just like maps. Yeah, but it's the same yeah, area that it's same So it should be pretty cool. And now you can go. They said you can go underwater. There's like submarines that they've actually put sea life in and everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. So, your impression was good. Yeah, it was a pretty fun game. <laughs> and uh, what did you think about the whole plasmids? And so in the game, you discover these like uh, genetic implants, I guess you call them. Yeah. They call them plasmids, but they're sort of like a genetic living thing, yeah. and they give you different powers, which you'll see in the clip. We have a clip actually. Right? Yeah. Uh, and you thought that was pretty cool. Right? Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I think so there was a lot of talk about how amazing the back story was, and I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Um, but maybe not quite as uh, earth shattering as everyone was saying at the time it came out. Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you played the sequel to it? No, I have not played the sequel you, yet. Are you going to now that you played the first one? Probably. Yeah. I was thinking of picking it up. I got it. The reason I got it is because it was like $5 in the bargain game. Right. <laughs> and I got exactly one year, uh, one year ago at Christmas, I was with my brother in the store. So Rapture is the name of the city underground, uh, under, under the, under the, the city, right?
pretty sure it's the Pacific, even though maybe they never really specified. Yeah, I don't remember. And I'm not sure where it is. It makes sense that you build one or another. No, it's a cold. Yeah. Well, Might be the Atlantic. Of course, you've got to have a wrench every game. First yeah. person shooter. You can't have a first person shooter without a wrench unless it's Call of Duty. Yeah. Or a crowbar. Or a crowbar or some other blunt metal yeah. object. You always got to paint it red, too. But that was one of the things. The art, the art direction in this game was really amazing. It's yeah. this wonderful sort of Art Deco combined with a little 50s futuristic uh, style, which sort of trickles to everything, the music, the, the little advertisements you find, posters, you know, like the worn posters on the walls, the audio in here, all that. Yeah. So can we trigger the clip from here, or we got to... Yeah, we can. Yeah, we, I think we have to add the... Let's try it. So now... We'll pretend we just came out. We could, we'll cut away to the clip. All right, yeah, we're going to cut away to the clip now. All right. Wow, that was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> I still can't get mine to clip in, so I'm not able to uh, make the So there was a big article in Wired about Bioshock Infinite, which is the next version of this game that's coming out. So when we get closer to the release of that game, we'll probably talk about it again. Yeah. Uh, the article is just pretty positive profile, but as I said, there was a lot of hype around the original game when it came out. Yeah. For some people, it was very satisfying, and for others, it was like, uh, you, you guys are overhyping a little. So we'll see what happens with this, this new one. Yeah. Um, so that was Bioshock. The next thing we're going to cover is, if you recall, uh, in one of the earlier episodes, uh -huh. <laughs> which for us was a long time ago, but for you, will be pretty recent. Yeah. Um, I brought in my collector set from Black Ops. And as you'll recall, I was very upset that the drone didn't work. Well, we returned with the drone and the controller that was broken, and I've repaired it. So what we're going to do is just to show you a little idea of uh, what the future is going to be like in the entire United States when there's drones flying around everywhere watching your every move. Uh, oh, I've got to turn this part on. Because, uh, let's see, we got there we go. As you can see, it's going to fly off camera. And it flips over pretty easily. So I wouldn't say that this uh, Black Ops drone is the best drone in the world. Uh, <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. Um, but this technology is advancing rapidly. Uh, as you can see already, it's cheap enough to turn into uh, toys that they can pack in with video games. And of course, the police are interested in them. The uh, military is interested in it. Uh, and uh, I guess it needs some development. If you're, particularly if these things are manufactured in China. Not that the Chinese make bad stuff, but they're trying to keep the cost as low as possible. And in the game, you can get one of these and you can shoot people because there's a machine gun on it. This one doesn't have a machine gun. Uh, hopefully you can hear me over the intense worrying. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it's going because now I can't see it. Flying up into the light. And that was it. Probably just broke. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to show you that in fact uh, the drone does work if you fix it, if it was broken. And um, it was kind of a neat little toy that packs in. I didn't say not to use it outside, but actually it would probably be easier to use outside um, in an indoor environment. Yeah. Uh, flying it around in the office was a little challenging. It doesn't control side to side very well. However, you can buy little toy helicopters that fly really well. Um, they're a little more sensitive on the vertical. Because yeah. uh, you lower the throttle and they tend to drop a lot. But anyway, we just wanted to show you that the, this is this kind of cool MQ, whatever the heck it is that came packed in, does in fact work. It's not just a prop, although that's what I thought it was going to be. So the game that I played over the break uh, was this game called The Unfinished Swan. It's out on uh, PlayStation. 
It's a PlayStation Network exclusive, so like, once again, I'm always on the PlayStation. Yeah. Um, but if you've heard of the game called The Journey or Flower or any of these sort of artsy games, this game is a lot like that. It's very artistic. It's a storybook, essentially. Uh -huh. um, there are definitely game puzzles in it and things like that, but it's really about the story and the atmosphere. And you play Monroe, who's this orphan, who, whose mom dies and you become an orphan, and she leaves you a silver paintbrush. Interesting. And one night at the orphanage, um, he's sleeping, and all of a sudden, he wakes up in the middle of the night, and there's this door in the wall that he's never seen before, and he yeah. wanders through the door, and he enters this mystical white realm. And when I say white, I mean, like, literally, it's just a white blank space. But he takes that paintbrush he's got, the silver paintbrush, and he starts splattering black paint. Oh. And so you throw these blobs of black paint around, and I've got a video that we'll take a look at, and I'll describe it more. Right. And the world emerges. And then it's a story that you follow along. And I'll show some of this in this video clip we've got. That was miraculous! No, it's not. We insert mm -hmm. these afterwards. Yeah. Anyway, so as you can see in the video, it's a pretty cool game. It is a PlayStation exclusive. Um, it's only like 15 bucks. It's a pretty short game. Yeah. It took me a couple hours, and I was kind of exploring everything, and trying to get all the... There's like balloons that you can find and stuff. Um, yeah. But it's nice because when you finish it, they give you little bonuses that make it much easier to go back and get all the other extras. Uh. So it's not like you're going to, oh, spend 10 hours trying to get that one last uh, you know, balloon that's hidden or something yeah. like that. There are other games where just trying to get a completed you know, 100% is a super chore. Uh, but this game is not like that. It's a really enjoyable game. And it really, it, I think one of the coolest things in the game that uh, I was playing it, and there were a couple moments where stuff came on the screen, and I just went, wow. Right? Uh -huh. And a second later, the kid in the game goes, wow. Uh -huh. So it was like somehow they knew that these were this was the reaction you were going to have, and they put it in the kid. But I just <laughs> thought it was really weird. Because the first time it happened, I was like, oh, that was really cool. Um, and then the second time it happened, I was like, oh, that's, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was like they're reading your mind. They you know what's really cool and what isn't. So uh, it's a good game, the unfinished one. I recommend it if you've got a PlayStation or if you're at a friend's house, you get a chance to play it, check it out. Um, All right. Would you like to take a look? Oh, wait. We already looked at the clip, we, didn't we? We already yeah. looked at the clip. <laughs> it's hard to tell when you're doing everything virtually in a computer. Um, so let's see. Uh, we've got a couple fan films. Oh, yeah. Oh, here. And the headset. Right. Yeah, we'll do that. So part. we said we were going to review. So do you have a, do you play with headsets at home? I have a pair of headphones, yeah. Hit the just have no uh, you plug microphone, in. though. Uh, so you, you just plug it in? Yeah. Um, which is okay, because you're sitting in a computer. Yeah. So, you know, I play at home, and I sit in a chair uh, a couple feet back from the TV, and my brother, who I must congratulate, for his, along with my sister-in-law, they just had a baby, mm -hmm. um, they got me these for Christmas. And this is the PlayStation Pulse wireless headset. And it comes with a little, there you can see, um, on the right is this model that I'm holding, and on the left is the new Elite model, um, which is, of course, uh, more money. Um, it's, I think you can get it for about 130 on Amazon. I'm not too concerned with yeah. the prices. You can look them up. There's no really sales and stuff. The new ones have some extra uh, uh, super base features. And that actually are powerful enough to vibrate the headset. So like when you get hit by bullets and stuff, you can actually feel things. Like in the football games, they say like you can feel the tackles. I think wow. what they might have done is built the vibrational motors from like cell phones. And you're on vibrate mode into the headset. So like it's like touch feedback or something in a way. For huh. These, uh, which are the ones on the right, uh, have a little boom. If you're not sure. See it there in the photo, it pulls out, but I'll hold it up in front of uh, the lighter background. We tend to run our show a little dark because it makes it easier to do some of the other work that we do later. Plus, we're moody. Uh, <laughs> and then here's the little wireless key that you plug in to your USB port. You can use these with Macs, PCs, um, and the PlayStation. There's separate volume control that 
uh, adjust between the chat and the music, so you can actually emphasize somebody's uh, the chat that you have uh -huh. with people. That only works on the PlayStation, but the other functions all work on um, PC and Mac and all that. They have virtual surround, and the sound quality, I mean, if you're an audiophile that listens to classical music or jazz and you're really picky, mm -hmm. these are not going to be the top experience. Yeah. But they are good headphones, and the music sounds, you know, your MP3s, from your iPod, the in-game audio sounds amazing. You'll hear all kinds of details that you probably wouldn't hear otherwise because they get lost in the shuffle and the environment you're in. Yeah. Uh, there's some noise canceling that's in the headphones, so they're really quiet when you put them on. Nice. You can mute and do everything. I would say the range is pretty good. I was able to walk around quite a distance with them, but if you lose line of sight to the receiver, oh. then you start losing the signal. Uh -huh. uh, so some Bluetooth headsets are a little bit better. These are not Bluetooth, by the way, and neither are the new ones. Uh, but they work universally with a lot of things, and I think that probably helps keep the cost down. Yeah. Future aspects of what uh, Bluetooth headsets are. So you don't have a, a mic on yours. Do you ever uh, engage in any kind of voice chat when playing games? Sometimes I use Skype if I'm playing with my friends. But so you can talk behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. My brother and I used to prop cell phones. <laughs> when you can, you know, when you're uh, on the same, uh, what do you call it, network yeah. provider, you get, you know, I'm going to call it. Yeah. We used to do that, to do that with, uh, with uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Uh -huh. but, uh, you know, where you can turn into a Jedi. Yeah. Thing. So, I recommend these if, if you're looking for a wireless headset for your PlayStation, um, if you're doing P PC or Mac. Um, I don't know how many other wireless headsets are out there. Uh, these are, at this time, they're pretty inexpensive. They've been out on the market for about a year or two. Uh, probably two years at least. Um, like I said, there's a newer model that has some different, uh, newer features, including these sort of sound profiles, so that you can, uh, the Elite version allows you to load up a profile for sports, for movies, that enhances yeah. various aspects of the sound. But, being able to get up and go get a drink without having to unplug a cable, yeah. you know, uh, get a snack, answer the door, anything, you, you don't even realize you have them on and you can still hear what's going on. It's, it's really nice. It really nice. changes things around. Yeah. And then you don't have to disturb your neighbors late at night or anything if you really want to blast it. I keep these on not even a quarter of the volume and it's plenty loud. Uh, I don't even know if I'd want to go up full volume and uh -huh. the or something. <laughs> so they're pretty good. Battery life, um, I think I got about five hours continuous gaming before I had to plug them in and charge them. There is a micro USB port on it, so you can actually take a cable like you use to charge your phone, depending on the kind of phone you have, or your, your other wire, uh, wireless controllers, and still be connected and listen and charge at the same time. All right. I, guess I think we're nearly out of time. Nearly out of time. Would you like to say anything else, friends? I know I talk a lot. So. No, I don't think I have anything left to say. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the fan films yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we're going to be bringing you... Which game are you going to be reviewing next time? You Frozen si Synapse. Frozen Synapse, that's right. And I'll be talking about Max Payne 3, which I got my hands on. Um, and... Probably some other stuff, and I think we're going to go back and probably find a new iPhone game. Yeah. And you'll see this set is going to change dramatically in the beach show that goes by, because we're going to keep experimenting. Yeah. Although we're probably seeing it deeper. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's queue up those end credits. And we've revised. We have so revised the end credits. And we're going to be adding. Thank you.